What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Proxmox. We're going to be covering the basics of Proxmox. So we're going to be talking about what Proxmox is, what it can do, what you could do with it, and we're going to work on this as like an ongoing series of building out a Proxmox server. So it's almost going to be like a beginner's guide to Proxmox. And even if you're not a beginner, you'll probably end up learning some stuff through this process. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications button so you can see when I post these videos and maybe you'll end up learning something new yourself. If you're not familiar, Proxmox is a operating system that is very commonly used in the home lab community. It has a free community version that is offered, which is why it's very popular in the home lab community. And it works very widely on a variety of different types of machines. You, you can run it on something like this, the Zima board. You can run it on something like this, the Zima blade. You can run it on something like this, a 2012 Mac Mini. It has Intel chips, so that's why it works really well Proxmox. You can run it on a Dell server. You can run it on an HP server. You can run it on probably a Cisco server if you want, if you can find one. You can run it on a mini PC, which is what we do all the time on the channel. You can run it on your old PC. You can run it on a PC that you found in the garbage. You can run it on a PC that you built from Micro Center. The coverage is really wide for Proxmox's use, and it works really well on a lot of different systems, and that's because it's a Debian-based OS, so it works very smoothly with a variety of different hardware and systems. Personally, I've been running Proxmox for about three to four years now. It had definitely had a little bit of a learning phase in the beginning, but the community is very active, and there's also always support online, so it's always easy to figure stuff out. I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit, but now we're going to go into the basics of Proxmox. So to start off, before we get any confusion, Proxmox is the company, and then the products that they make underneath it are the different operating systems. So the main one's going to be virtual environment, but they also make a backup server and mail gateway. Now, I haven't personally touched mail gateway, but if you're somebody who's interested in running your own mail server, it could be something to check out. Backup server is a direct component to a virtual environment. It's not required, but highly recommended as it's a backup solution to ensure your virtual environment stays safe. And when I say stay safe, I mean safe as we have backups in case something happens. But virtual environment is the main product of Proxmox. It's very popular. It's what we're going to be talking about. And it's something that I've been using for years and I think it's great. So Proxmox is a open source KVM hypervisor. You're able to make Linux containers and virtual machines as well as manage networking and a load of other stuff in one area on one system. And that's pretty much what they're going to be saying in this portion. And it has quite a bit of features. It's offered for community use, but they are also growing the enterprise area of it to compete with the change in times of VMware and ESXi and stuff like that. The requirements are pretty simple. You just need pretty much an Intel or an AMD chip, at least two gigs of memory, some storage. If you wanna run raids, you need some additional hardware. But other than that, you could run this on anything pretty basic. Even over here, you can see one gig of RAM is the minimum for testing. Like I said, I ran on these Mac minis. These only had eight gigs of RAM. I think it was like a four core CPU. And I had a pretty good experience. I did run into some issues where I maxed out the memory at some points, but it's expected because I only have eight gigs of RAM. But I was even able to run a Proxmox server off of Mac mini. And I actually ran a high availability cluster off those Mac minis. We'll talk more about high availability and clustering later on in this video. And if you weren't familiar, Proxmox is open source and it also, like I said, runs on Debian. So at its base, it is just a Linux machine. It then has Proxmox installed over it, depending on how you want to do your install. So you could either install Debian and then Proxmox, or you could use the official Proxmox installer, which will do it all for you in one shot, which I do highly recommend makes the process a lot easier. If you've never seen a Proxmox server before, over here is actually mine. These are two of my nodes that I have clustered together to manage. This is the Boromine Tech server, which I use for quite a bit of my projects. And this is just a $50 mini PC that I got off of eBay. You can see it has quite a few containers and a couple of virtual machines on it. This is all stuff that I use for testing when I'm working on making videos. Over here I have Minilab and Minilab is actually my home server that I run. It runs off of an HP Elite Desk 800 G4. 
think I have that all in the right order. It's a tiny little PC, but packs a lot of power. And you can see I have quite a few LXC containers. There's really a lot of different possibilities of what you can run. I have a ton of different services in here. I have some productivity machines like my Windows 11 box. And then sometimes I'll have a Kali box if I need to do some pen testing or you know, I'm just trying to practice, keep up with my skills. Beyond that, I can run game servers. You can see I have Crafty running over here. I ran a 5M server over here when we were playing GTA. And you could really run a lot of different stuff. Over here is the dashboard. So as a brief overview, we have our data center view, which is going to show all the nodes in the cluster. So I have one and two, so it's going to show all the information. But if I break down to one node, you can see it's just going to give me more of the specifics. I'm just going to give kind of a brief overview on this because this is just, just talking about what Proxmox is. Going forward, and there's going to be more videos where I'm actually going to break this down way more into detail. So like I said, make sure to keep an eye out for when those come out. But this is just the, pretty much the basic dashboards of Proxmox. So now that we talked about Proxmox, what it is and what it looks like, let's talk about some of the stuff that we can do with Proxmox. So we're going to go in and we're going to go over some of the stuff that you could do with a Proxmox server. So like I mentioned, I have this machine over here called Crafty. Crafty Controller is a service that you can run to manage Minecraft servers. And I'll actually show you in a minute. We can go up here and play Minecraft right off of my home lab server. So you can see over here, and I'm hoping that Minecraft isn't too loud, but if I come over to multiplayer, I have bar Minecraft up here and it's just loading up and I can actually come right over here. And this is a Minecraft server that I was hosting off of my server. I can play it locally, or I could even share it out with my friends through some port forward and, and some other networking. And you can see over here is a Minecraft world that I was playing on a while back. So this is one of the things that you can do by running your own Proxmox server. Another thing you could do is host a home dashboard like homepage. And you can see I actually run this off of an LXC. This is my homepage dashboard over here. You can see there are some errors and that's because some of the linking broke, but this is a LXC container that I run off of my Proxmox server. And it just helps me in organizing my home lab, my services I'm running and have shortcuts to everything across. So this is a, another thing that you could do off your Proxmox server, as well as the additional services that could run off of that. A really popular service that a lot of people do run on their Proxmox server is Pi-Hole. If you're not familiar, Pi-Hole is pretty much a DNS sinkhole, monitors all your DNS traffic and blocks anything for ads or malicious or anything else that you might set. So this is a, another service that is very commonly ran on Proxmox. These are just some examples of what you can do. Of course, there are way more projects and I actually have a whole playlist of Proxmox projects if you're interested, but you could do stuff like run a router, a firewall, you can run game servers, you can run virtual machines, you can run test environments to test different services. You can do a whole bunch of different stuff in Proxmox. Now there's two main ways to run services in Proxmox and there's LXC containers and virtual machines. Virtual machines are like they sound, they're just a full out VM where LXCs are kind of like a sub piece of the actual kernel run in Proxmox. So you just take a little piece of that and then you can run smaller containers similar to like how Docker works to run different services this has grown in popularity recently especially with the huge growth of the community helper scripts or the proxmox helper scripts so we'll just talk about that really quick so like i was mentioning before a lot of these services up here you can see where they have kind of like a square or a box these are all lxc containers these are smaller containers or, or smaller machines that i can run different services off of and it's just one machine to do all that but it runs in a substantially smaller piece um, so like you can see over here, Pi-hole uses one CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM versus I have this Docker machine over here that's going to be using four cores, eight gigs, and a much larger boot drive. You can either make custom LXC containers or custom machines, or over here, these have been really popular with the scripts, and then they have them all categorized out and they make it a lot easier because you can just come over here and let's say I want to install image, I can just come and grab the script and install it this way. Not saying that this is the only way to do it, but these are just some additional options when it comes to building out LXCs. They also have scripts to build VMs. So you have a lot of play. And then of course you can still build them out yourself manually. Beyond the base of virtualization and making systems, Proxmox also has a built-in network. And so on top of that, you could also handle the networking level at Proxmox as well. So you could handle like the layer two switching so you can do VLAN tagging and firewall rules and, and way more. I haven't messed with the networking a whole lot, but like if I come over here to my node and then through the networking, we can make different VLANs or we can make different interfaces for our machines to use. So if let's say we want to VLAN traffic out, we can 
through the actual switch and through the Proxmox software. Additionally, there's a firewall, so if you want to make firewall rules, you could do it right here at the Proxmox level as well. So these are all things that are capable in Proxmox to do. Another feature of Proxmox is the high availability. So you can see I don't have anything set up right now, but pretty much what we could do is I can pair my nodes together over here, and you really should have a third. But what I could say is that if something happens where this node goes down, I can migrate off all these machines and make them high available. So it means that no matter what's going to happen, unless we have a complete failure and all the power goes out to my site, everything should try to keep up running that I specify to. So if I'm running a high availability cluster, let's say I want to keep uptime Kuma running, I could set it to migrate over automatically to the bar my tech server in case of a failure on mini lab, whether it disconnects or it goes offline or I lose power or something like that and it'll automatically do it in the Proxmox OS to say, hey, it looks like this node went offline, let's bump it over to the other node to make sure it stays running. This is a little bit more intricate and it's not really probably a beginner thing you might be doing, but it is something else that's available in Proxmox to do is have high availability. Additionally, high availability works with clusters. So you can see over here I have Barmine Tech and I have Minilab, like I said, so you can join these two together into a cluster. And you can see over here, I actually have my cluster information where I have my two servers. So pretty much it just makes it so they can work together, especially if I want to set up HA or anything like that. Currently, Proxmox doesn't have a tool where you can just manage the single servers individually without clustering them. They do have data center manager, which they are working on, but it's still in early alpha. That would be their targeted software to kind of make it so you don't need to cluster the servers anymore, but you can manage them all in one spot. One more thing I do want to talk about is the backup solutions. So like I mentioned earlier, Proxmox does have Proxmox backup server. It is another free project that you could just install on another machine. You can make a virtual machine or however you want to do it. And it connects directly with Proxmox since it's built in to work natively with it. So you can go through there and you can specify to back up certain machines, containers, certain schedules, however you want to do it. And you can back it up right to your Proxmox backup server, as well as restore it if you ever lose a machine or something breaks or whatever it might be right off of it. It's a very seamless process. And if you're looking into setting up Proxmox for the first time, I highly, highly recommend making sure you have either additional hardware to make a Proxmox backup server, or you have capabilities of making it on a virtual machine or something because Proxmox backup server is going to be a crucial part to your home lab. So pretty much that is a overview of what Proxmox is. I know I covered a lot of different stuff in this video. I kind of wanted to get this out there so we could have a high level overview of what Proxmox is, what it could do, what you could do with it and how it all works and some different stuff built into Proxmox that you might have not known about. So like I said, we're going to be working on a Proxmox series going forward and we're going to be building out a new server and covering a lot of this stuff. I hope you will subscribe so you can see the series upcoming and hopefully learn something new about Proxmox. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. If you could drop a like, it helps more people see the video and it helps the channel grow. As always, I'll have links to all my gear in my home lab down below if you ever want to check any of it out. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you want to join up in there. And again, I want to thank you all for watching. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.